Hey yeah, guys, all right, so I'm just here with uh, Vegan Gains, Nate Talks to you, Corey McCarthy, think about this. Uh, we're also going to get Seth, the programmer, on here in a few minutes. He's just, I think, ordered some probably non-vegan food and waiting, so, um, you know, he'll he'll pop in here. Then later, I'll have a few patrons on and they can, you know, ask some questions if they want to. So, uh, yeah, how's it going, guys? Not too good, how are you? Yeah, I mean, pretty pretty good overall. I I haven't gotten in any shit for getting rescued off a rock with a helicopter, so you know I'm, I'm pretty good. Into death in Canada yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's finally warming up. Yeah, open? absolutely. It's it's actually getting nice. So soon enough, we'll get to appreciate the good weather. What's the average temperature over there at the moment? Yeah, it's like um, around three four degrees per day. Yeah, it's like hovering above the zero mark. So, yeah, I mean, there's not a, a general central theme. We'll just talk about veganism, talk about whatever comes up. Um, I have a question. Uh, Richard, what's yeah. up with the purple hair? What spurred that uh, happening? Somebody uh, paid me 500 bucks to uh, dye my hair. Well, that's and, a good uh, deal. He wanted it, yeah, he wanted it, me to dye it green, but then it would fuck with my green screen. So I said, like, uh, Jasmine said it should be purple. So then he just paid me 500 to dye it purple. And I have to keep it like this for 30 days. I think he'll make it through. Yeah, <laughs> it's not yeah the blonde was looking pretty good prior to turning it purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a lot of people said that. Yeah. Like a Dragon Ball Z character or some shit. Yeah. Looks, looks like a finish on a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I think would be worth addressing is Nate and Martin, you guys have had a bit of a video history. So I'd be curious, like, just to clear that up here, here where you're both at now. Uh, Martin, you could begin if you want to. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much the same position. There's a few things that I've obviously honed in on and uh, improved on, but essentially the same position. Um, but yeah, I've heard that you've changed your mind about a few things. So I wouldn't mind hearing about that. All right. So the rundown of the of the situation between myself and Martin was uh, must have been back in like 2015. I made a video called How to Be a Vegan YouTuber, and I was parroting a couple of vegans and Onision as well, who's actually a vegetarian. But uh, then, I, um, think about this, I uh, made a video response back to me um, going after some of the stuff I said in that video. Then I made a response back to him called Don't Be That Vegan. And then he made a response back to me again, and it kind of just ended from there. We didn't pursue anything further. Um, so at the time I made those videos, my mentality, I didn't really have anything against uh, people at a vegan diet and anything against people who were vegan. I just felt that some of the, you might say, optics of the vegan movement were a bit um, corrosive. And that was my main issue with it. But I didn't have any grievances against the diet. I didn't think that it was unhealthy. Um, but yeah, now I am trying to pursue more of a vegan type diet because uh, right now, here's my diet. Um, I'm no longer having any beef, period. I'm no longer having any dairy milk. So now I'm having stuff like almond milk, soy milk. And now I'm just trying to avoid having any like cooked meat in my diet, period. Like uh, I want to start having more veggie burgers. So that's kind of where I am right now. Awesome. Yeah, fucking A. I mean, it sounds like you've gone pretty much all of the way there. I mean, what are you even eating anymore that's not vegan? Well, I still have stuff like uh, cheeses and, and honey in my diet, and I'm still having stuff like, you know, like cold cut meat. But uh, if it's stuff like burgers or, you know, like, like cooked chicken breast, that's all gone. I'm just trying to have veggie burgers to replace that now. What about when you eat out at restaurants and stuff like that? Uh, I'm not really a big fan of fast food. And I mean, sure, every now and again, I might have like Wendy's or whatever. But for the most part, I try to avoid that stuff and just get stuff from the grocery store. Okay. okay. You should uh, look into Tofurky cold cuts. They yeah, have, I remember. Uh, I think that Ask yeah. Yourself mentioned that to me. And yeah, yeah I'll, I'll look into that really for good. sure. The, uh, yeah, that way you can avoid the ass cancer. <laughs> <laughs> the Thanksgiving roast flavor is the best for the Tofurky uh, cold cuts. I'll make a bookmark for that. Yeah. Where are you? Uh, where are you? Are you based at? Like U.S., Canada? Me, uh, I am based in Illinois right now. And no, not, not Chicago. I'm like an hour or two south of Chicago. Do you have a Whole Foods market? Uh, I've never been to Whole Foods, actually. I usually just go to stuff like Walmart or Aldi for food. But I'm sure there's a Whole Foods somewhere on here I could try. Look for uh, Beyond Meat brand products. They'll Beyond blow your Meat. Mind. 
Beyond Meat. Yeah, there's something called the Beyond Burger. It's incredible. Yeah, it's really good. That's yeah, and favorite. also, what about Guardian? Like Guardian, I mean, I don't fucking shop at Whole Foods. Guardian's good in America, but yeah, yeah, Guardian you can find everywhere. I mean, yeah, Guardian's amazing. Yeah. Yes, there's lots of fucking absolutely dank substitutes out there. I mean, yeah. I love Beyond Meat because it's got a lot of lean, um, so to speak, products uh, that are great for bodybuilders if you have like strict macros or what have you. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I'm not really a bodybuilder per se. I mean, I do lift weights, but I'm not trying to be anything professional. I'm just trying Fair to build enough. up some muscle mass. Yeah, I mean, I get into the conversation all the time, and it's an area where I don't have enough information. I mean, I don't know a shitload about health. I don't know really anything about bodybuilding. So it's good to have uh, Corey and Richard here. I guess, Martin, you you do some level of, of weight training too, don't you? Every now and again. I'll go through a period of time where I lift weights consistently for like two to three months, and then I'll just stop. But <laughs> I do it. when I feel <laughs> like doing it, I'll go do it. You got to offset being 6'10, don't you? Yeah, um, <laughs> six foot five and a half to be precise. That's all of you, Corey. I'm only six. Jesus. Oh, okay. I'm six foot two. I, I mean, they, they say they say vegans are fucking whatever. It's like everyone here is tall as fuck. Like, we got Richard and I at 6'3, Corey at six, Martin at some ginormous fucked up <laughs> six, six, basically. Just get out of here. <clears throat> you say six two, right? Yeah, I'm six foot two. Okay, one point for the carnus, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so one more before we kind of move off of um, just talking about Nate and veganism. What's what's stopping you from just just doing the full transition? Just fucking cut it cold turkey. Just buy some plants. I don't know. I've just heard from different people who have tried that, and uh, they have like they they have that craving, you know, again for meat. So I figure just doing a gradual transition for me personally would be a lot more effective than just going cold turkey. I could be totally wrong about that. I just want to try that and see if it works. And so far, I seem to be going more and more towards a vegan route. Yeah, it totally depends on the person in my opinion. Um, some people, they can just do it overnight and go vegan overnight. But others, if they do it overnight, they'll be more likely to just succumb to desires for animal-based products again. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it depends on the person. but. Having said that, I do think the morally correct thing to do is to do it overnight, but not always the practical choice. Well, one mm -hmm. thing I could say for those who have a craving for meat, like um, I don't know how widespread, I've only tried it a couple of times now because we have it here in New York City, is um, there's a product called the Impossible Burger. It actually has heme iron in it. Uh, they've derived from a plant source. So see, unlike the Beyond Burger, which uses beet juice, um, this actually has um, a synthetic heme iron in it drive from plants and uh it's actually scary realistic to real beef doesn't it look like it's bleeding it fucking look well i mean it's got that red tinge to it i mean it, it yeah it's I, i've had it ordered from bear burger they, they cooked it up so i didn't i can't find it in a store but apparently the you're eventually be able to buy it like you would ground beef and by weight yeah the products are getting fucking intense i mean I've made this point a lot of times, but there are just so many roles to be filled in the actual vegan movement. I mean, when people think doing something for veganism, what comes to their mind is it being an activist in one way or another, but there's a lot to do. I mean, obviously you need activists, people out on the street or on social media promoting veganism. Uh, you need people designing products. You need people just showing numbers and showing up at rallies and stuff. You need... Um, Obviously, some people actually doing like intellectual work, like, you know, clarifying ideas, uh, breaking down concepts, because the thing is, the people doing the activism, most of those people don't also want to have to do a ton of like intellectual labor on the side. They'd rather get um, it's it's useful for them to have people who are doing the kind of idea work and then they can take the ideas and use the ideas for their activism. We also just need people normalizing veganism. So you know, whenever you have someone who has a YouTube channel, uh, just being like, you know, whether they're doing bodybuilding, whether they're doing, you know, some some sport, DJing, whatever their thing is, simultaneously being vegan while doing that, it's just another data point for everyone out there of this is normal. We need people running restaurants. I could just go on and on and on. There's so my, much to be done. My issue with the activism side of things, and there's nothing wrong with activism per se, and this is something you and I are going to address in our collab. Is the fucking intersectional SJWs that have taken over <laughs> and I think, injected I, a cancer into veganism. They co-opted the movement 
that have made it about everything. Yeah, I think we've got a complete echo chamber here because I don't think there's anyone in here who supports that shit. Mm. Right, you know someone who does? We could bring in here, maybe? Rational thought, too. Um, people who support it. Well, I mean, I, I know people who do, but I think it would be a bit weird to it's cause it's like a kind of like patron stream. I don't want to just bring in randoms, but you know, I'm the, we can always arrange a debate on intersectionality. Not every topic has, not every conversation has to be a, a debate of two sides battling it out. But I mean, I, I personally, I agree that it's cancerous. Like I think that intersectionalists, what they care about fundamentally, as far as I see, is not even veganism. They care about their far left ideology and veganism is just just a, a way for them to collect more people for their, you know, far left coalition against Western civilization. Well, I don't think they care about any of their movements, actually. They wear it all like jewelry. Yeah, yeah, like I most of these people, they're just selfish fucking bitches. Like yeah. so many of these intersectionalists they like you'd think of all people they'd be the ones who'd want to jump on board of veganism because they're so against things like uh, systematic oppression but they mm -hmm. always come up with stupid excuses not to go vegan like well, it's like they don't give a fuck about anything really yeah one of the funniest things about it is i've been making this point for years i mean <laughs> if there's anyone who should be vegan it's fucking sjw's when you say that the thing that you care about is systematic oppression it's like there's one group out there who is legitimately being systematically oppressed or even even if you want to assume that other groups are which i don't accept in the west but let's let's say that that were the case there is no doubt that it's happening to animals on a far greater scale globally it's been happening forever and the treatment is far worse what other group is getting uh in you know in like for example modern western society uh bolt gunned in the head hung upside down and then drained of blood just based on what they are there's no other group that's oppressed on that level. So if you care about oppressed groups, then the ultimate thing you should care about is veganism. And if you don't, you're just an utter hypocrite. So I think veganism is actually something that really clearly exposes the hypocrisy of intersectionalists. Indeed. Yep. I think it could just be that um, maybe veganism is like a final step that a lot of people in our culture have difficulty transitioning over to it because since birth they just found it natural to eat meat and they have trouble absorbing that that final message that's just my assumption of these people speaking of natural and and nature and whatnot mm -hmm. did, have any of you guys seen uh gad sad's vegan stuff i know richard has but yeah jesus christ i haven't seen all of that i've seen brief moments of each video yeah i mean it's, it didn't it's capture well, I was, I mean, what I was gonna say, I've seen portions of Gad's sad stuff. Remember, there's one video you linked in in a chat somewhere. But uh, are you gonna actually have a debate with him eventually? No, oh, he won't debate. He's not, I mean, he's refusing. For uh, that. Yeah, and, and that tells us the unreasonable ones when he's the mm -hmm. one not willing to have discourse. Yeah, I mean, I think it's totally absurd. And again, this is just a huge instance of hypocrisy because something that people like Gad, like really that whole side, criticizes SJWs for is. They have these really strong opinions, but they will never debate. They won't actually defend their position in debate. But then it's like, well, Gad, you have this strong ass opinion on veganism and you won't debate. Why won't you defend your position? Isn't this like exactly what you mock SJWs for? How's that not hypocrisy? Well, thankfully, I hypocrite debated you. He was actually willing to go on there and, you know, duke it out. Oh, you know what I've got to do is send him a fucking link. Thank you for reminding me because <laughs> he has... He has some bodybuilding concerns. I think that his belief is that you can only build muscle as a vegan on steroids. That's so such shit. <laughs> there are plenty of bodybuilders who are just on a normal vegan diet, and they, they're doing fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it's that's one of the biggest fucking myths out there. I mean, that's not one that I spend any time on. I, I stay in the ethics domain, but Richard and Corey have done a lot of work on just debunking that shit. I mean, both of us, as far as I know, Richard is totally natural as well. I mean, so it's total bullshit. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, people will, will just call you on that and say they don't believe you. Like, have you published whatever the, the way is that they determine if you're natural or not, like a blood test or some shit like this? No, I've not done that yet. Yeah. Like, it's how far? Unless it's really expensive and doesn't really prove anything. Yeah. There's no reliable <clears throat> way to, like, demonstrably prove anyone's on gear. 
Oh, come on, Richard. You can do what Simeon Panda did and just do a, a lie to some test. Fucking asshole. You have a follow-up video for a fucking reason. Yeah. What What did he do? He took he a did. lie detector test to prove he wasn't no. a scare. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's like... It's it's more obvious that he was bullshitting everyone when he did that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, not even admissible in court, so I don't know why yeah. they'd suddenly do that. <clears throat> and then, um, sl slight topic shift. You're working on a gun video, Richard? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've almost finished it. I've got the whole timeline laid out. Um, Markiplier made a retarded video about like a week or two ago saying that uh, we should ban assault weapons or assault rifles in particular. So I guess he thinks submachine guns are perf perfectly fine. Uh, it was just totally retarded, made from absolute ignorance, and he's just virtue signaling. He like he didn't spend any time researching the topic. Like so. Yeah, I'll I'll give my basic opinion in two seconds. I just noticed Seth has jumped in. What's up, Seth? Uh, oh, sorry about that. Ah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, man, no worries at all. It's all good. Um, yeah, as, as far as the gun stuff goes, like I don't personally know a whole lot about guns. My basic position is that people have a right to a force equalizer. It's not fair to tell smaller people, to tell women, for example, that they don't have a right to self-defense and they have to wait on the police to show up. They need an actual effective deterrent and well, they have a right to protect themselves. Well, and, and I would... Sorry, yeah, like, yeah, go ahead. Here's the fucking thing, too. A lot of people say, well, just let the police handle it. Well, there's the first problem that they can't be there instantly. They're not magic wizards. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, the police are often completely fucking incompetent. With the recent <laughs> Parkland shooting, there was an armed police officer at the school during the shooting, and the guy wouldn't go into the school and face the gunman. And then uh, four other police officers showed up on the scene while the gunman was still in the school. They didn't do anything. They were just waiting for the shooter to shoot up the school and leave. And don't Wait, forget, the, F the FBI actually knew about it, apparently, ahead of yeah. time, too. They were given warning. There was yeah, so much so, evidence to back it up, yeah. Yeah, so the police, when, like, the police are totally fucking incompetent. Like, the people who are paid that, like, for our sake, like, to, you know, make sure they shoot the gunmen's and uh, keep us safe, they're completely fucking incompetent, so... Why should we leave our personal safety and security to the police when they can't do their fucking job? Like, Not to mention, on average, in the U.S., it takes nine minutes for police to respond to an emergency call. In the U.K., it's 15. Yeah, so it's complete nonsense to say, like, you know, you, a law-abiding citizen shouldn't have a right to bear arms and uh, protect themselves. How do you all feel about having stricter background checks? Now? Is that You can all get behind that, right? A what? I, stricter background checks for strict. people who... Well, I mean, like, I, I, I don't, don't know, know how stricter. I don't know how strict it is currently, but I'm all for putting whatever check is necessary to make sure crazy people don't get weapons. And just That's, to, yeah, that seems off, reasonable enough. Like, just to, to finish off, yeah, to, I think so. To finish off my basic opinion on it, I don't know enough yeah. about guns to like. Look, I think we can all agree. Um, I, we have a bunch of pro gun people here. I don't know about Seth, but I think everyone else thinks that at least you deserve some basic right to have a firearm. I think we also will all agree at some point, whether it's anthrax or tanks or anti-air missiles or a nuke, if we have to go that far, that you should not have access to certain things. So there's obviously a spectrum there where at one end you have stuff that you're going to say, okay, yeah, people should have like whatever it is, a handgun or a shotgun or something. And then at the other end, things that you can't have. So where exactly we draw that line and what the, what the principle or principles are that we use to draw it, that I'm not sure about. But anyone who's saying get rid of all guns, that's crazy. So I'm kind of willing to be persuaded as to just just quite where that line should be. I, I guess it depends on the degree of a threat a certain weapon can have. So, for example, a rocket launcher could destroy an entire building. So there's really no need for the average citizen to own something that powerful. In what situation? Not going to hunt anything with that. I know that we're all against hunting here, but just saying hypothetically, you're not going to hunt anything realistically with a rocket launcher. I, I agree. I mean, you could try, I guess, and then collect the, <laughs> the scraps of its body and cook them. But I mean, I think that one principle that I would kind of propose that seems to make sense to me right now, someone can debunk it if they have a better idea. It seems like you should have a right to a force equalizer of minimum force necessary to actually protect yourself uh, reasonably well. So if you can say, 
that weapon right there is completely excessive. There's no need for any for any of the situations you'd have to defend yourself in at home or, or even concealed carry in the street. There is just no reason you'd have to have like you know a rocket launcher. That that seems like a pretty. <laughs> what about a flamethrower? I I definitely don't think people should have access to flamethrowers. That sounds insane to me. <laughs> I it's mean, X body spray in the in the lighter. That's a flamethrower. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. pretty limited flamethrower. You can't take that into Vietnam, and you know. Well, you can fill a super soaker full of uh, gasoline. Same people do that. <laughs> so I don't know if it's like you know some things. It's just not sensible to ban them just because, like, it's so easy to just make them or have something similar. Mm, yeah, I mean, there there are sometimes pragmatic arguments. I, I hear that too. I mean, I think that. The the kind of ban all guns camp, I don't know, I don't know where exactly they're coming from because it seems okay, the main argument seems to be something like as long as these are on the street, um, we're just gonna have more death. So if there's more death, you should get rid of the thing. But yet they don't actually apply that same logic in other contexts. I mean, there's other things like a car. I know I know people hate that analogy, but I don't see what's wrong with it. Yeah, meat, dairy, a eggs, car, processed sugar. Yes, well, well, yeah, I mean, th those I am against meat and dairy, obviously, for other reasons. But with a car, it's like we accept that to the degree that we let people own cars and to the degree that we raise the speed limit and to the degree that we set a, a limit on what the safety standards should be and just all these things, we, we set a certain threshold of death that we're willing to accept. We don't say you have to bring it down to absolute zero. So I kind of feel the same about guns. It's like people have a right to self-defense. And if that comes at the cost of some lives, then, you know, I personally am fine with that. I think that people should have a right to defend themselves. Maybe now, they now should ban Islam in Europe. <laughs> I, I'm not for banning religion. That's somewhere we, we diverge. <laughs> now, now, regarding the, the car analogy there, um, this is a little caveat before I begin this. Uh, I am in favor of people owning firearms, but I don't think that the car analogy really works the same way. Because, I mean, you can survive in our society without owning a gun. On the other hand, I mean, you really need a car to get around in modern day society. You need a car to go to work, to go to school, to go to the hospital, go to the grocery store, where a lot of that would not be viable if you just have to go uh, walking everywhere. I guess a bike could work in some situations, but not all the time if you live very far away. So I, that's I, the I, one difference I have with that. I'd, well, I'd push back in Okay, well, one second. I just I, I'd push back in two ways on that. One is that most car use I don't think comes from necessity, um, and the other pushback I'd have on that is if we want to take cars off the table, I can find other things that you're going to say should be legal and still cause death, like alcohol. Well, let me just give one example here. Uh, my my father, his place of work is about an hour drive away from where we currently live. So using a bicycle or or a horse and buggy, that's not really realistic in, in modern society for a person like him. Now, there are some people who live very close by and they're very lucky and they could use a bike, but not everybody has that um, that privilege. Hmm. What, what were you going to say also there, Richard? Yeah, like I'd say, like you could enforce some stupid law where you could reduce the speed limit to 30 or something. And there's other things that you'd say aren't necessary, but you wouldn't be in favor of banning them like processed sugar, you know, processed sugar does cause like it does contribute to obesity. It does cause a certain amount of deaths per year. So should we ban processed sugar because it causes harm? Like it, the the gun control argument, it seems to only come from the standpoint of uh, harm reduction and harm prevention. And it doesn't take into consideration uh, personal rights and freedoms. Yes, that, that's how I feel personally right there. Um, okay, so I think um, now that we have Seth on here, I don't know if Seth is on a bit more of a time limit than us. Uh, it was a bit ambiguous there. Um, so, Seth, I'm curious, what's, I mean, you've kind of been, as far as I can tell, sort of orbiting the vegan sphere a little bit lately. Oh, we've got the hypocrite is. here also. Okay. <laughs> Hello. What's up, LP? Hey, guys. Hey. Um, yeah, so I'll talk to Seth first for a minute here. Um, so I, I noticed Seth obviously orbiting the vegan sphere. I actually have seen Seth, uh, frankly, destroy some people on veganism. 
uh, where he actually, even though he's not a vegan, takes the pro-vegan position and just wallops people in his server. Or he, he went in and like one man tanked um, JF's like entire Discord server. So, <laughs> what what's the fucking deal, Seth? Let's let's get well, your your opinion here. I I think that my position um, in not being a vegan is just objectively like evil. <laughs> like uh, my. <laughs> My beliefs are just objectively evil. They should not be applied to society at all. <laughs> like, so are you a psychopath? Uh, I don't. I don't think I'm a psychopath, but uh, I mean, <laughs> when you boil it down, it becomes a little, a little strange, I guess. It it's funny because some people are just willing to bite the bullet on that. I mean, like some some people say, "Oh, like what? Like I've gotten this before. Why do you talk to Seth? He's not a vegan. He blah blah blah." It's like, bro, I'll talk to people who aren't vegan. I'll talk to far left people. I'll talk to far right people. I don't see how it does any good to just break communication with everybody. But yeah, just ad admitting the position is evil. That seems to me like. I mean, I guess if you want to bite the bullet on that, but most people don't want to say I what I believe is just pure evil, and I don't want to change. Uh, no, no, I like what? Sorry, go on. Oh, like I said though, it's like I don't believe society should be structured around like my <laughs> evil beliefs or anything. Yeah, I mean, if I if I can say it's evil, then yeah, obviously other people shouldn't follow it. But it's when it comes to me converting to veganism, like individually, then it becomes more about convincing me not to be like evil right that's a so it's more about okay. an individual thing that's actually why i convince other people to be vegan because they're just morally inconsistent it's easy to call them out on <laughs> well yeah it's fun it's funny because you could hypothetically i don't think seth is a psychopath i think you should just need to go watch earthlings and get emotionally in touch with what is actually happening so it's not just an abstraction in your head like oh animals are killed i know that's wrong i know i can't defend it but it's just this vague thing it's like if you mm -hmm. watch something that makes it visceral that might actually affect you emotionally and you might uh connect a bit more with it but it is funny to think that you could have someone who actually is a legit psychopath who could go around persuading people to be vegan by just being like well this is what i believe do you guys want to hold this position yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, it's like, like I Destiny's been kind of doing that lately. There's that girl on Twitch who uh, killed, who said she killed the dog, and then Destiny made a huge rant about how uh, everyone's up in arms about this dog being killed, but they're fine with like slitting pigs' throats open and Good. all this other shit. Good. But he, like, the weird thing with him is instead of saying, uh, coming to the logical conclusion that okay, well, we shouldn't needlessly kill animals, he's just saying, no, let's just torture and kill all animals, like make it, all of it permissible. Yeah, I mean, it's nuts. funny. I, I've made this point a bunch of times, but veganism, it's going to reduce your position to either inconsistency or absurdity. So mm -hmm. most people who we've debated, we reduce them to inconsistency. They end up saying, you know, basically in one way or another, I hold this standard for animals. I hold it for humans. You ask them to justify it and they just spew irrational shit that, that doesn't actually uh, work like with roaming millennial it's like oh it's you know emotional level or intelligence but you won't kill humans of that level like that's just an inconsistent position or warski you know it's species but doesn't want to be killed based on species or friended it's in group doesn't want to be killed based on in group but the other option is to actually be consistent but accept an absurd position and so far <clears throat> two people have done that and that i remember maybe there's more uh destiny has uh, accepted a logically consistent position that justifies genocide and he's bit the bullet on saying it's fine to just just murder women and children if they can't accept our social contract even if they're not trying to kill anyone um and then jf has bitten the bullet if for anyone who didn't see just yesterday i mean richard got him to bite the bullet on some pretty crazy shit last time i did in my first one but yesterday i think i hit a pretty crazy point with him i said he said his fundamental value is um existence not quality of life so i just took that to the extreme and i just said okay well so jf you're in a white room for the rest of eternity every bone in your body is being broken at every point in the bone forever you're having acid dumped on you forever and your eyes are being gouged out forever this is your future the same thing will happen to all your kids forever and there is no chance of escape do you want to live and he bit the bullet and said yes so I'm not going to deny that from that position, you can be consistent and argue against uh, veganism. But that's uh, uh, one of those insane positions that's consistent but absurd. So yeah, most people just demonstrate they're inconsistent. There's the odd one who's willing to bite the bullet and just stay consistent and, and look like 
uh, total fucking psychopath. So Isaac, I'm wondering, uh, hypothetically, if, if the entire world were to take the, the destiny route and all bite the bullet, what would be your next course of action to try and compel them to go vegan? I have never even thought about that. Um, I think most people are like emotionally normal. And once they kind of make the connection, they are, you know, going to go vegan unless there's some kind of mental blockage there or something. But if everyone, if in a world where everyone is willing to accept the psychopathic position, I mean, I don't fucking know, appeal to their self-interest, try to legislate against them, maybe. I, I'm not sure. I haven't thought about it. Um, like, Destiny's not being honest when he says that. I think everyone who makes that kind of argument isn't being genuine. So to them, I like, I just point out that, um, like, what they're suggesting just doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, there has to be a practical purpose to having... Uh, things like a social contract and, and moral rules for a society. And if it's not going to follow along some sort of like some sort of ideal of a society where we reduce like unnecessary suffering as much as reasonably, reasonably possible, then why would you even have a social contract in the first place? I think they bite that bullet because they're afraid of the alternative of basically, uh, you know, admitting they were wrong. Yeah. yeah. I think you're probably right. Um, well, there's one other. Sorry, go ahead. Well, and I mean, Destiny's argument is just still inconsistent because, or at least you can show some sort of weird logical loophole. Like, if he's going to say a social contract is the only thing that matters, well, how do you determine uh, how to deal with people who don't follow the social contract? Because you could have a social contract where, uh, you know, it's rude to interrupt someone when they're talking. Well, okay, well, do you shoot them in the face and murder them? Or do you, like, scold them and say, hey, that's rude? Like, they're, the principle behind, uh, like, the social contract and how we, deal with, uh, how we deal with each other and how we treat each other, it's based on well-being and empathy. It's not based on social contract. So he's always skipping a step when he's talking about morals. Like... He skips the step of empathy and the idea that well-being matters and then only focuses on social contract. So there's just, yeah, there's something fundamentally wrong about that idea that Destiny has. To be clear, I, when I say someone's inconsistent or someone's accepted a consistent position, I don't mean that there's not inconsistencies that can be found in other areas. I just mean they bit the bullet on this is my reason for discriminating against animals and I will bite the bullet and discriminate against humans based on the same reason. I'm not saying you couldn't find other levels where it contradicts with something else they believe. Yeah. Um, there's one thing I, I really want to hit on while we have uh, I Hypocrite and uh, Seth here, because both of these guys have said that they're into bodybuilding to at least some degree. I think I Hypocrite said it's a, a amateur interest. I think Seth is a bit more serious about it. Um, but you guys should get whatever health or bodybuilding questions you have dealt with right now. Cause we have Corey and we have Richard here, so they can answer pretty much anything you would want to know on that topic. Before I do that, uh, did you debate JF again? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I didn't actually see that. Did you bring up the baby chicken argument? No, I, I didn't even, uh, get there. We just, oh, okay. we closed off our three table points and then, uh, we just talked about this weird prioritization of, he was saying uh, existence over quality of life. I was saying quality of life over existence. And I just pointed out the logical conclusion of that position. And when he bit the bullet, I said, okay, well, you can justify veganism from that, but most people think you're crazy. And yeah. uh, I think the comment section where the most upvoted comments from his own viewers on his own channel being for me kind of speaks to the point. Yeah. Admitting to absurdity is definitely an L in those kind of debates. So I, I think for most people it is. Most people yeah. don't have an absurd <laughs> position. So, uh, for the bodybuilding thing, I'm assuming that this is questions about how to be a bodybuilder using a vegan diet, right? Mm -hmm. um, I myself, I do the generic like bro sets, right? You know, squats, deadlift, and then bench press, you know, three times, you know, you work out three times a week. And then, you know, you eat chicken like six times a day, maybe steak twice. Um, and then maybe like an apple snack twice a day, right? Uh, in between like, say, an hour in between meals or something. So... What would you point out as the problem with that? Well, first of all, there's no evidence to show that you actually need to split it up into six meals per day. So that's not that's not really relating to veganism, but 
meal timing is basically more of a personal thing. As long as you're getting your calories and macros in per day, that's all that's really necessary for uh, for gaining muscle, maintaining muscle strength, etc. Now, all you really need to do, it's as simple as this, is replace the macros you're getting currently from animal products with uh, plant-based products. It's uh, it's it's literally as simple as that. So, but you might have to, you know swap some things around. Like for instance, tofu isn't precisely the same macro content as beef, for instance. So you might need to pull in some extra fat from somewhere else, you know, extra, um, maybe a little extra protein from somewhere else, or even just eat extra tofu. But really, that's that's really what it comes down to is just swapping the uh, whatever macros and calories you were getting on uh, from animal products, just get them from from uh, plant products instead. It's literally as simple as that. So you don't believe that the metabolism goes up when you eat small meals throughout the day? There's no yeah. evidence to show anything about that. Okay. There's actually none at all. In fact, there's a new study that just came out that talked about meal time. It actually has uh, Alan Aragon, Brad Schoenfeld. Um, they were all involved in it. I forgot who else was in the study. I think I don't think Eric Helms is in the study, but the study was just from this year. It showed that you don't need more than 1.6 gra grams of protein per kilogram. Uh, that source doesn't matter. So plant sources are equal to the animal sources and meal timing was uh relatively unimportant don't you find it hard to eat like 200 grams of protein in like vegan diets though no it's really i don't easy. know it just seems it seems like a lot of that's what i'm getting per day right now it's, it's actually really, really simple yeah what do you guys eat for that well right, so yeah well do you want to go cory oh you can go ahead and go first okay well uh in the morning i have oatmeal with some hemp protein and soy milk and then afternoon, I'll have lentils with uh, tofu. And then at night, I'll have lentils and maybe more tofu or maybe just some like vegan mock meat or something like that. What the hell is a lentil? Like, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a a that it's sort of like it, a it's actually pronounced uh, lentil. Yeah, lentil. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> no, it's, it's lentil. That's a joke. It's just yeah. a joke from that no bullshit <laughs> retard. So what's the... What's the protein per each one of those or in a serving? Um, I'd have to look. I think, uh, well, per tofu is uh, 50 grams. Tofu is about nine grams. If extra firm tofu, nine grams per eight ounces, roughly. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I think in a block of tofu, you get about 50 grams of protein. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So isn't that like, I'm trying to think. So like, for example, tilapia, what is the health like problems with tilapia or eating that? I think tilapia is particularly bad for uh, like mercury and some other metals. Well, wait, 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 just one second here. Paging milk jar. Um, mercury oh God, is not bad if it comes from a fish. <laughs> yeah, oh. Jesus Christ. That retard. <laughs> so is mercury just super bad for you or something? I mean, I've never really. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's toxic at high levels. And if you're consuming enough of it, your body will store it and you will. You can toxify from it, yes. And, okay. and to, to be to be clear, the reason there is so much of it in fish is bioaccumulation. Yeah. There's a lot of contaminants in fish, actually, and there's warnings put out about this. So consuming fish is that you're actually getting more contaminants than probably other forms of meat. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming the problem with like chicken is that it's like has a lot of estrogen in it and stuff. Just weird. It contains phthalates as well. Yep. Yeah, it's weird yeah. shit. So I what about like phthalates. steak? What's the big thing with steak? It's a carcinogen. I mean, red meats in general, because of the heme iron, are carcinogens. And it's not just from cooking. It's the heme, it's the heme iron content in the red meat that's been linked to colorectal cancer. Yeah. So it doesn't even matter, like, if it's, like, heavily farmed or something like that. It's just any red yeah. meat. Yeah. 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 Okay. So speaking of cancer, uh, isn't soy protein carcinogenic as well? No. Um, okay. Well, or here's the thing like about that. that. People think that soy is carcinogenic because the IGF-1 content. Any high leucine food is going to contain a lot of IGF-1, but you have to understand that you're, it's, it's, it's not the same as injecting IGF-1. It's, it's going to return to baseline not long after the meal. And so unless you're like slamming soy like every 30 minutes and keeping those levels elevated, I don't see any – there's not really any risk to consuming soy and an IGF-1 risk for cancer because it's, it's, it all goes back to baseline. So it's, it's a transient effect basically. It's the same oh. thing as like when you squat. You're not going to get a steroid-like effect from the testosterone boosting of squatting because it's a transient effect. It's the same sort of. The, the reason I asked that, I thought there was a video that Richard made a while ago where he mentioned that that soy protein powder uh, can give you cancer if you have too much of it. So I just wanted well, to clear that up. Yeah, like I said, that it, it can raise IGF-1 levels to the same extent as like adding meat to your diet. 
So it could be a risk factor for cancer. I don't think there's been any research showing that like uh, elevated IGF-1 from soy intake increases risk of like prostate cancer or something. So I can't say for sure. And uh, soy protein has like benefits, uh, you know, with isoflavones, which are have an anti-cancer effect. So I'm not sure. It's like just all things considered, since there's like other protein options, I'd say it's just better to kind of avoid soy protein for that reason. Yeah, what do right. we got? We got hemp, hemp, we got pea, we got we yeah, got rice. Like there's rice, there's yeah. a few there. You have wheat protein, you can spike it with leucine and get it have the same anabolism as whey. So yeah, it's a lot of options out there. What is the uh like cost factor of those like tofu and shit like that versus eating like factory farm chicken like if you're on a really tight budget is it going to cost more to do that vegan style i can't really speak to what chicken costs because i haven't i haven't purchased or consumed chicken since like 2002 so uh but tofu is about three bucks in like let's put it this way in perspective in whole foods market in new york city one of the most expensive places to live tofu is like three bucks for like an entire 50 grams of protein like one uh case of tofu they have so, blocks of tofu here at Zares for like two bucks, and at Food Basics, it's like a dollar. And that's Canadian, too. Mm, Canadian money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Any any more questions or concerns with health, bodybuilding from from either of you guys there, uh, LP, Seth? I'm no. just not really clear on where all the proteins coming from. Like, you, so you have two tofu meals a day, and if we say that's a hundred grams, where are you getting the other hundred grams for? Like soy shakes or something? Uh, no. Well, like, in my case, yeah, mock meats. Uh, I, I can get about sixty grams of protein from a pack of Beyond Meat uh, veggie chicken strips. Uh, I get like a from one protein shake after my workout, twenty-two grams of protein right there from rice and pea and hemp and bl and various blended uh, sources. And then, of course, tofu in the evening. And I, I count what's in my broccoli. I count what's in my fruit. I have beans sometimes. It all adds up. You know, people don't think to count the green vegetables, but there's like five grams of broccoli. I mean, a protein in a cup of broccoli. So, yeah. And I eat about uh, 400 grams of lentils per day. So that's a <laughs> big protein. You, so, you do um, really fuck with the lentils. Yeah. So is it true that your body can only digest 60 grams of protein per like hour or something? I've no. seen no evidence about that. It, it The body can store the amino acids too, so. Okay. Yeah, that's all my questions, basically. I don't know if he uh, has questions about, like, a workout or anything, but I'm done. Yeah, okay. You, you got anything else on health or bodybuilding, LP? No, I just, uh, that's all I really wanted to know was, like, how you get the protein and how much it costs, basically. To put it in yeah, perspective, okay, okay. I, I spent about 100, 150 bucks per week on groceries at a high-end supermarket in New York you know, to feed myself and my bodybuilding uh, lifestyle. So, yeah. And then, but then you have to take supplements on top of that, right? Or Not really. I mean, I have B12, I have a multi, I have a, a D3. These are the things I take one for various reasons. B12, obviously, because everyone I think should take that, but the vegans especially should take that. Um, I take D3 because I just don't get a lot of sun absorption, to be honest. It's kind of gloomy this time of year. And um, a multi because when I'm dieting, I, I just want to make sure I'm not, I don't have any holes in my diet. So uh, that's, that's, it's really, it's, it's not excessive. I take creatine too. Just some of the basics that, you know, bodybuilders who consume meat and dairy take as well. So yeah. nothing I, unusual. Yeah. I just take a B12, vitamin D and a LG based DHA. That too. Yeah. So yeah. As far as it goes for supplements for me. All right. Anything else there LP? Uh, no, that's it. Okay. Um, yeah, and then... Oh, I, I have a question. Is eating alien meat okay? If there's an invasion, can we eat the aliens? <laughs> Are they trying to kill us? If they're trying to kill us and you have to kill them anyway, it's probably fine. Or if they're not yeah, sentient. I mean, like, if that's the only food source available and there's a lot of dead aliens around, then, like, like I don't see the problem. Um, you might want to be careful, though. Like, they might have weird viruses or bacteria yes. that kill you. Exactly. Maybe they have acid blood. You know? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, well, as JF would say, you know, the, the strong, the right genes that will be able to consume the alien meat will persist <laughs> into the future. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. And then 
one other thing I just want to touch on briefly. So how many of you guys have heard the term power scaling? No, I've never heard that. No. Okay, so so this is basically what Seth does. He's like, like I mean, he can describe it better than me. But I mean, the, as far as I get, the, the gist of it is just you're looking at objective facts about characters and their universes, whether it's comics or manga or anime or whatever, and just extrapolating their, their power level from those objective facts and then using an objective standard to measure them against other characters from other, you know, universes or whatever it may be, and just determine who would win in a fight. Well, a good example is this. I don't know if you're going to get in trouble for this, but like you could power scale like the Christian God, right? You could say, uh, <laughs> for example, uh, it took him, what was it? Six days and the days in the Bible are long or like, I, I heard they're like millennia or something. Like there's like theories about it. So it took this guy like possibly thousands of years to make the universe and characters from Dragon Ball like Beerus can destroy the universe in a single shot. So you could prove that characters from Dragon Ball could like literally kill the Christian God, like no difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good example. Yeah, it's honestly so hilarious. So, so the thing that has has interested me about it because I'm not deep into any kind of like uh, superhero shit, any like not into super deep into anime or anything. I've watched a few good ones. If anyone wants great animes, I might get ripped on here, but um, Parasite, insanely good. Death Note, insanely good. Psychopaths, also insanely good. Agreed. Um, okay, nice. Um, yeah, but uh, the thing that's been of interest to me uh, watching some Assess videos is the pushback you get is actually from people who literally don't value logic. They actually don't care about logic, and they think that applying logic to uh, any kind of story and just looking at consistency is somehow a wrong move. Yeah, it's really crazy. It's like, I don't know, they, they view logic as like confrontation. So like if you <laughs> say, hey, this you interpreting it this way is just objectively wrong, they think you're like attacking them. I think that can really be applied to any group of people, you know, like. Uh, for example, a lot of leftists, you know, they really feel personally assaulted if you ever bring up a fact or anything of the sort. And it's really strong with the anime community because I'm going to be honest, a lot of them are beta males. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty damn powerful there. Mm, yeah, I mean, I guess like because, you, yeah, you get a shitload of views. You get the most views here right now by a, a pretty good shot. And like. I guess a lot of them must be just fucking weebs and stuff, but I'm sure they're not like, there's no way the whole community is betas. Cause I've met tons of people who are into anime who do like, you know, whatever active shit, go work right. out, stuff like this. Yeah. Oh, LP, I have a question for you. Sorry to cut in here, but uh, I had no, a question man, from Jack green. Uh, he wants to know if you're Jewish. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm doing the go, ancestry Jack. thing though um, later this year at some point. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this to rest once and for all. I get that a lot because of my nose, so I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna maybe, maybe you're Italian or Roman. I don't know. I don't. I, according to my parents, I'm British, Scottish, and Irish. So I'm gonna find out for sure. But I'm gonna bounce now too, guys. But thanks for uh, inviting me and answering the questions and stuff like that. Yeah, well, man. Keep well, Alpi. I'll catch you later. Oh, and uh, by the way, I, I have to go in 30 minutes. Just to, to All right. Play. Yeah. So, I mean, unless there's anything else you want to cover before it gets crazy, I'll just bring a few patrons on. They can ask a bit of shit and then we'll probably just uh, close it off. Sure. Sounds um, good. I have a question, though. Weren't you going to debate that guy or didn't you debate that guy before? The hypocrite guy that was here? Um, I debated him recently. Yeah. Oh, OK. Because I was wondering because I remember that whole fiasco in the chat. So I was like, is he is he here to debate? I don't know. And then he just left. <laughs> um yeah I, I don't know it, it would have been funny to debate him on some vegan stuff but yeah i think he was just just popping in sorry if i'm a tad distracted i'm just sending out the that link to one or two people in the That's meantime okay. we question. know you're watching porn oh yeah just, just <laughs> watching porn question for richard uh, are there any updates on the matt dillahunty debacle has that gone anywhere since then no, um, I'm going to email that guy from Pangburn. Um, I held off on doing that because I wasn't sure what date I'd move into my new apartment. And uh, the Matt Dillhunty is going to be in Toronto in April, and I move into the new, a new apartment in, in April. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to figure out all the dates before I uh, contact Pangburn. But uh, Matt Dillhunty is a fucking pussy. He said he was going to make a, a, a video explaining his idea behind, you know, why he's not vegan still hasn't done that and it's been what two months now 
mm-hmm. and like he's blocking people on Twitter and shit. Like, how many friggin', yeah, how many people are you blocked? Pointed out? Huh, me? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm I don't blocked. think so. I, got I didn't get a notification. But I mean, the guy just directly contradicted himself. He'd appeal to things like social contract and reciprocation. And then when I'd show you have like logical loopholes here, he'd say, no, no, that's not true. I just like my moral values are based on well-being, period. Like, how is it based on well-being, period, if you're making exceptions <clears throat> for animals when and you're involving social contract and shit? It's retarded. Like, Martin Bye. pointed that out really well. Yeah, it's all over the place. I... Yeah. Well, yeah, and I, I got banned by Dillahunty for <clears throat> sharing Martin's video and tagging him in the post. So that, really? that was the that was the final straw, yeah. <laughs> Maybe because I kept calling him a bold cut about the entire video. That's um, true. What what did you say that his biggest so you know how he's as bright as a scalp? video soon about how he's apparently explaining his position on veganism to this actual thing that he believes. He's already made his position quite clear as it is. So that video is kind of redundant to make. He's like he's already made it clear and we've responded to it and shown how fucking stupid it was. Yeah, he has, he hasn't he's, given any fucking thought into veganism and he just totally tripped over himself the entire time. When you mentioned that thing about mentally retarded humans having no moral value, you yeah. could see him realize that he lost. Like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like, if you can read people, you can see that he's like, fuck. And then he just said that thing about categorical reciprocation. Yeah, species are individual reciprocation. I was like, that's the biggest cop out ever. And all of those little positions that he created as the video went on, he should have stated those at the start. Why the fuck would you lead someone down this massive road and then at the end just go, no, 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 but this, this, and this. And it's yeah. like, mate, you should have said that when we started so I could actually understand where you're getting at. Yeah, just and, and then when I asked him questions about his position, he called me a dishonest liar and shit. Yeah. Just, Which is hell? assuming your motives. Like, Does he yeah. talk bad about vegans in general? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. He does? He's, he's not like being like, oh, vegans are fucking assholes, all this, but his, his general perspective seems to be pretty firmly anti-vegan yeah, so what, does pretty he think about, what does he think Sorry. about like sam harris and stuff on it um i don't know what he said He's, richard tried to say something about sam harris thinks we should value conscious creatures and matt tried to say that he he, he said it about thinking creatures which is not what sam harris said yeah. and then he said that i'm i matt dillahunty am not beholden to whatever sam harris said so he implied some level of disagreement there I'm not really yeah. sure. I don't know. Yeah, I was just gonna say it would be interesting if he was talking bad about vegans, and then it's like Sam Harris would be like on that vegan route. So we also we have one or two patrons here. We have Krellness. I don't I don't know him too well. I don't know if we've spoken. And then we have uh, Matt and maybe Mel. These guys run uh, the pig save for Arizona. Or, or what? What do you guys do out there? Just remind me one more time. It's a uh, animal save general, but we general uh, yes. we do vigils for cows mostly. Yeah, so I mean we're we're kind of like winding down here. We're just gonna be on for another like you know 15, 20. But if you guys or Krellness, if any of you guys have questions, you know, you have our attention. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I just wanted to mention about Matt Dillahunt one more time. Is it's disappointing because I think that Matt Dillahunt does a very good job at debunking people like uh, creationists and, and theists in general. So yeah. it's not being, seeing people who can be so smart on one topic, then when it comes to a topic like veganism, they just fall off the edge. The thing it's is, probably because people like Matt are so used to being right all the time. It's normalized to him. Do you think? How long do you reckon he was a Christian? If he was a Christian at the beginning yeah. of his life. Yeah, I have it, no idea about his background. He, I think he mentioned yeah. it took him 20 years or something. Okay. To... When you think about that, that's about the same time as the ad- average person to eat meat and then go to veganism. Yeah. Most vegans I know these days go vegan around 20. So it, he's pretty much done that. Because when you think about veganism, and it's similar to creationism in the sense that you're taught to believe in God from birth, and then eventually you might become an atheist after realizing it doesn't make any sense. Same with veganism. You're taught to eat meat from birth. They give you meat, you eat it, like, just dogmatically. And then later in life, you go, oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. In the same way that you go, wait, maybe I shouldn't be believing that I believe in God. It's the same shit. Um, 
maybe Matt Dillahunt is so far down that route of eating meat that it's like so hard for him to just take it out of his mind. It's so normal to him. In the same way that someone that's been eating meat for 40 years, it's so normal to them to just fucking continue eating meat or believing in God or whatever. Yeah, I suppose like when you do something for a long time, it just has its own momentum, doesn't it? You just kind of keep going. Yeah, well, I mean, a, a lot of people pointed this out to me, but they're like people like Matt pick on easy targets so like creationists and fundamental christians and it makes them seem smart but it took matt like several decades to realize god doesn't exist so he's he's really not that smart mm. yeah I, so. I think part of that could be i mean when matt dillahunty how old is matt dillahunty like 30 something 40 something oh no, he's god like he's got to be like he's like, got like 50 or something right well, well like, the point on. being is i mean like back when he was growing up he didn't have access to the internet where there are all these people who can readily debunk all the religious bullshit. where when i was growing up i became an atheist around like 14 or 15 and that's because i had things like youtube and the internet in general to debunk everything that i was being programmed to believe throughout my childhood to, just for the record, he's 48. I just looked. Yeah, I mean, he. I feel like, didn't he actually go to university, to a Christian college or something like this, to learn, um, I, oh, I forget, like, whether it was apologetics or theology or something. That sounds like right, but uh, I don't pay too much yeah. attention to Dylan Hunty. Yeah, because, I mean, I got to say, like, if it took you that long to figure it out, uh, like, I don't know what's going on in your mind, but yeah. it's like, it's the same way with veganism, like, I'm not uh, I'm not impressed when people understand an extremely basic concept like, wow, you figured out there's no magical being or, yeah. or you know, oh, whoa, you you understand that it's wrong to stab a being in the throat when you don't need to. Oh, bravo. And that's why we actually have a lot of scum in the vegan community who I ban from my platforms and say, get the fuck out of here uh, because it's such a low bar for entry. It's like. You, you know, it's oh, the only thing holding us together is it's a bunch of people who know it's wrong to stab. Like, fucking bravo. Totally. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite a basic position, but it, it also depends on how far they've gone into the state of just eating meat in their life. It's, if they've got all these irrational justifications that they're attached to, I think there's an emotional level of getting over it in there rather than a logical level. Because yeah, if you so. question someone about eating meat that's been doing it for ages, they are a lot more resistant and they're a lot more fucking in your face than someone that's so young and they don't really care about it because they've been doing it for a much shorter period of time. But, yeah. You know what I've realized is we really got to ask you about this while you're here and you're live, Martin. What's what's the deal with you and your channel and the future of Think About This? Everyone asks all the time, so let's get a let's get a fucking statement on that. Well, um, I make videos for fun, and I don't force videos out. So mm -hmm. if I don't feel like making a video, I won't make a video. So a lot of people will make fair videos enough. to maintain consistency. And that's fair enough if you want to build an audience, but I don't necessarily want to build an audience. If you want to watch, you can watch all you want. But that's not the motivating reason for the channel. Um, having said that, if I was to abandon work, then I would have to be consistent in order to make that a viable income to do it and make money. Because unfortunately, we have to make money in society. Um, so it's, yeah, at the moment, I place the highest value on doing it because I enjoy it rather than doing it because I need to make money, which therefore doesn't mean I'm going to be consistent with making videos. Um, I sense? also... Oh, no, I, I totally hear you. I mean, you're just kind of uh, a man of the heart, I guess. You do what appeals to you in the moment. And if you make a video, it's because you genuinely want to talk about that. Yeah, you're yeah, not, yeah. not doing it to please people or, or stay consistent and build an audience. You're just expressing yourself to your platform when it's yeah. what you want to do. Well, so you, you actually can't even make a statement about the future of Think About This. All we can really expect is... Videos here and there when Martin feels emotional about something. When I, when I don't work as much, I naturally want to make more videos. And if I didn't work at all, I'd make consistent content, like, without a doubt, because mm -hmm. my focus would be 100% on making videos rather than 50% on work, 50% on videos. So, yeah.
maybe in time I'll just quit my job and focus primarily on that. Um, yeah, no, well, I mean, it would be fucking sweet. I, I have a feeling that one day randomly in the future, there'll be some time you'll get all inspired and we'll see a huge burst of content or something. And then maybe it'll, it'll fizzle maybe. out. I, I mean, I don't, I don't even know, but it's all good. Cause we like whatever we get. Also, I heard Mel try to pop up there for a second did, or pipe up. Did you have something you were trying to say? Yeah. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Awesome. I wanted to say, first of all, hello. It's great to have all of you in one place. Um, you guys are a huge inspiration to us when we're talking with Karnas on the street, and it's really helpful. Um, but I also wanted to ask and say, uh, are you still going to do your Change My Mind piece? I saw that recently, and I'm really stoked on it. Of course we are. We're just in Canada. Yeah. It's cold right now. We're just waiting for warm weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cold small by Isaac, and we're going to do that. Awesome. I, I'm so fucking tired of that Crowder asshole. I see his videos pop up all the time and I'm like, God, he is a beta male. He talks about beta males and I'm like, he's a fucking beta male. <laughs> What's up, Alexis? I see that we've got you here too. Hello. Hello. Are you an um, anime girl? I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, <it's> anime. <laughs> So we're probably just going to do another, like, what, like 10 minutes? What do you have left, Richard? No, like I've not been watching minutes. them. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll be here for just a bit longer. Do you have anything in particular, or are you just, you just popping in? Uh, I'm just popping in. Okay, all right. Well, if you feel inspired to ask anything, go right ahead. And, yeah, um, we were kind of talking about this a bit earlier, uh, Mel, uh, and I guess Matt, too. But, you know, you guys are out doing the kind of IRL shit, like, I mean, running the save movement for Arizona. I mean, okay, first of all, one thing that we should maybe mention while Corey's here, you guys get in beefs with the intersectionalists oh, in God the movement sakes. and in, in other organizations. And they actually create a problem for you at this like ground level IRL activism. Uh, is that a fair statement? And if so, can you just, in fact, either way, can you just elaborate a bit on that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a huge issue. You know, there's people who just want to infiltrate and steer your activism into what they believe it should be, yep. which is absolute bullshit. Um, we're constantly telling people what we're there for. And it seems like they forget, you know, they're like, oh, well, the workers and blah, blah, blah. And you know, what I really want to talk about is the victims, the real victims that are being oppressed. And it's just never, it's never perfect for everybody. So we just ignore people most of the time. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I appreciate that you guys have a pretty hard and fast policy. You're like, we are doing animal activism. And if you want to bring something else in here, it's just not welcome. Go start, go do your own thing. We're doing animals. <laughs> That's that, We're not doing animals. That, you know. that kind of stops the disease right in its tracks. Boy, Isaac, what do you think yeah, about up? people that um, they say that vegan activism is the moral baseline rather than um, just being vegan? that it seems like a strange statement because i don't i don't really believe much in sort of a positive positive rights i think that would be the way to put it like i believe that you have obligations not to fuck with others i don't believe that you necessarily have obligations to uh help others in all other cases now i think that the general analogy they use there where like if you walk by a man on the street and he's getting kicked or something mm -hmm. i think the problem with that analogy is that you're taking something that's directly tangible and you'd be pretty fucked to not help and then you're analogizing that to Very something cool that is bomb. exactly and the thing is once you go to things that are a bit further like that like don't get me wrong i think activism is extremely yeah, yeah. good it's a very good thing to do but mm -hmm. i think that um if you're going to make that argument, you would have to make it for all the causes and it kind of reduces to absurdity. And then what are you supposed to do with your time or something? Yeah. And then there's also just a pragmatic argument. That's kind of the principled level. There's also just the pragmatic level of that makes it harder for people to get on board with veganism. What we want fundamentally is people to go vegan. We care most about that. If we can also get them out doing shit, that is, that's bonus. But we don't want to make it seem like the bar to be a vegan is higher than it actually is. That's my opinion. Does anyone else disagree? I'm I'm open to arguing the other side or I hearing the other side. I no, think it's that sounds pretty hard to put it as something as a moral virtue and a moral obligation. Is that I think it's morally virtuous to go be an animal rights activist. However, it's not a moral obligation to be an animal rights activist. I would agree with that. Uh, yeah. I'd like to speak to that a little bit. Um, sure. I know I've talked to you in the past about a lot of like apologists, and it's so prevalent here. <laughs> 
uh, especially we see it a lot in the States where people are just like, you know, I'm doing enough with my diet. And it's like, how do I convince these fuckers that if they're not even talking about it in their daily life, they're not doing anything for the animals? Well, I mean, I think that the baseline is not doing anything to fuck with the animals. But if you, I mean, I think when it comes to inspiring people to get out, I mean, like, I, I don't know how you psychologically motivate them, but it's just, I, I just don't know that it makes, uh, like, do, do you think that for someone to be a vegan, they should, they should also have to be doing activism? I don't know if have to is the right word because there are definitely people that are exceptions to the rules. Like there are people who are handicapped who can't come to certain events. And there are plenty of people who have certain excuses that I totally understand. But I feel like there are so like there are power in numbers. It's so important for all of us. Like there's 300 of us in front of the slaughterhouse. We can just close it for a night if we wanted to. So when I see people tell me excuses like, oh, it's too far away. I just I can't. Uh, accept that excuse. I just can't because if we're all out there at the same time, it's more powerful than just three of us. I I mean, I just I kind of feel like the same thing I said before. I agree that it's good, and I think that the more people you can get out, the better. I just think that setting that as the baseline, it's like pragmatically problematic because it makes the bar to get people on board with veganism higher. And it's just in principle, there's a bit of a problem because you can make the argument for all the issues and then it reduces to absurdity. It's like, well, I mean, what about everything else that's going on in the world? Do I have to be doing activism for that and that? So I get, I totally get where you're coming from, especially because you guys are out on the ground level doing this kind of stuff. And it's like, you just want people out there helping and showing numbers. So I understand, is, I value that, but I just don't know about saying, and I'm not saying you're saying this, but I just don't know about saying that is actually the moral baseline. That's what I deal with, sorry to interrupt, oh, you're good, you're good. but that's what I deal with when I deal with uh, trying to bring right-wingers into the vegan movement, is that whole thing like, well, I'm fighting for nationalism, I'm fighting for my uh, for the border protection, etc. How can I also find time to be a vegan activist when I would just be happy with them just going vegan, you know? Mm. as a baseline do you, guys, do you guys want to come back on that do you like i don't know if we're disagreeing here because we all we all agree it's good to show numbers and to come out and i, I don't think anyone's saying it actually must yeah, be it an, is, obligation. I guess, not an obligation to come out yeah it's an it's an extremely good thing to do and if it's right there i think you know it's like why would you not do it but yeah, yeah. i think for me i think it's important um baseline yeah that's it's hard to say but I think that would be an interesting thing to bring up with uh, someone like Joey or Earthling Ed, because I know uh, they both have gone on record saying like, and I know for sure Earthling Ed, I'm pretty I know sure he Joey, has. I don't know about Joey. I know Ed has, is, though. Is the moral baseline. So that would be an interesting conversation, I think, to hear someone like them flush that out, because even more so than us, they're like out there, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think with yeah. Earthling Ed, it could be a productive conversation. Hmm. Yeah, a hard guy to get a hold of. When I was doing that stream with Emma and uh, Joey, I was I was gonna try to get him too, but the guy's hard to contact. Mm. I mean, he's busy. He's doing a lot of stuff. Real busy, yeah. Very busy. Totally. The, the um, thing is, there there are different ways to promote <laughs> veganism. They don't always require you to go out on the street and hold a sign or, or talk to people. I mean, the, the great thing about the modern age is that we have the internet. We can go on social media, and if we see people posting pseudoscience about whatever we can contact them and, you know, post about them and say, Hey, this is wrong. Here's a source showing why you're wrong. So I don't think it always requires you to actually go out in public and do it. You can just use your social media platform to promote veganism. I, I think that Matt and Mel would probably acknowledge that that's activism. I like, I agree with you, Nate. I, I yeah. just, I don't know if they would even disagree with that. Speaking from more of a niche, I know one thing that I do is wear a vegan tank top to the gym that always draws stairs and asks and brings, uh, it prompts questions and, opens dialogue and uh you know it does change some minds on what a vegan can do oh know, man so. it's i i think that it's easy to understate how <clears throat> important that is like if you're some fucking jacked dude please just wear some vegan shit to break the stereotype so yep. people are like oh okay that is totally just some random delusion i have in my head you can totally be very fit and be vegan Yep. Yeah, like 90% of my shirts are all like pro vegan shirts. Oh, I've noticed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to get some more. Speaking of which, Richard, I think Jasmine sent me um, 
shirts that someone had designed um, after our debates and they have aliens on yeah, them and it yeah, says yeah. circle of life or something. Yeah, that's yeah. so funny. I love those. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, um, unless there's anything else we want to touch on, I'm thinking wind down time. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so in closing, uh, fuck intersectionalists. Everyone should have a basic <laughs> right to a gun. Um, please don't deny logic and accept power scaling. Um, do activism if you can, and um, have a good night. Good talking, right. you guys. See you later. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, thanks. Peace out.